Tata, <laughs> E piki rā ni ki runa ki nā mau, ki a hāua koe nā haua a tāwhiri mātea. Ko tērā kaupapa, ki a rapua roto i o mahara. Ka kita koe, i roto i o mahara, i te wawā te rau rā kau, ano kai te kōrero mai ki a koe. He rui nā tāngata, ko a rungua ue ki ana, a i rungu au te rā kau e e kōrero ana. I pera na ra hoki te ni me te pakeha. Ko piki te numa te pakeha ki numa te Maori te take he he para o ne hoki ko he mangu mangu ko e. Kahai le mai rata, kaki rata ko rata te ranga tiro te me o te me o te me. I hara ko no ko e. No re kia kaha kia kaha ko tu kia kaha ko tu ma tane ni. Kia kaha koutou, kia kaha koutou te pupuri o tātou tika. E pera ana te tika ngā te pākeha. E penea nā rātou, ah, hai ahanu hau koe, hai ahanu hau koe, hai ahanu hau koe. Nā hea hā te mana whenua. Ka tipu mai tāua i roto i tēnei ao, ka titiroa ke tāua ki waho ka kitea ke ngā maunga e tūmaini, ngā wai rere nei, ngā toka e tako tōmaini, te whenua e hora nei, ngā whare e tūtūmaini, Ka kie a koine ngā huatanga e here ana i a tāua ki tō tāua whenua. E mōhio tiaia o tāua maunga, o tāua awa, e mōhio tiaia e tahi atu iwi e waiake rāne a nei te a huatanga kai te pupuri i tēnei tangata ki tōna ake whenua. Mana whenua ka hoki mai anō ki a tāua ki a tama wahine. A tituro tāua ki a papa tūnuku he matua wahine tērā. Ka noho mai te tamaiti ki rote ki te whenua, ki rote ki te kōpū. Mai i te whakatotanga, ka uru mai te kōpū rau o te tamaiti rā. Kai te ako te tamaiti rā, mai i te whakatotanga, ne? Mai i te whakatotanga. Ka uru mai wairua hoki ki rote, kai te mōhi o pai. Ko ia tonu i te whakaaro, ka noho mai e nei toko rua hei mātua, nā ka tīmata mai i reira. Nā, ko te pātai mo te whenua. Nā te rua kēna nā te kōrero. Ka ngaro te wahine, ka ngaro te tangata. Ka ngaro te whenua, ka ngaro te tangata. Tua tahi ake, ko te whenua e kōrero hea nei, e mata, a rā noa atu te hōhonu tana o tōna whakamāra. Ko te whenua e no huairo te te wahine, ko tāna mahi. Hea whi i nga whakairatana i whakanohia i e teure ki rote te kōpū o te whae ka tipu ake he tanga. Nga i te naro te rā whenua a me pehau ki putai he tanga. I te naro hoki te rā whenua me pehau e urai te tanga. 
na hua tanga kato te ako te ako ka tīmata mai reira mai te whakatotanga te tikanga me waiata me koro mo ngā oh me ki pene a haupau e here korero nā korero paki era mea kato waiata pao koera nā mea hai whāngai atu ki te uri ki te tamai tine i rotu i tērā e i koe tātou wariwari ka hoki atu ki a tamawahine te whenua ka whānau mai te uri te tamaiti ka puta mai te whenua mai e te kōpū o te mata wahine ka whakahokia tēnā whenua mai i konei kia papa tūnuku ki tēnā whenua hoki Wai hoki me te whenua o papa tūānu te whenua o papa tūānuku i putai nga rana tira o te au Ko tāna roa tērā, ko tāne tērā, ko roa mano, ko waiake, ko waiake, ko waiake. Ko nga rana tira i whakanohi ai, hai mana, hai mauri, hai manaki, hai kalapochi i nga kaupapa katoa i roto i nga aitanga tāne. Ko te whenua hoki te pātaka e o rai te tangata. Ko taua pātaka he pupuri i nga pia kāka wairua e o rai te tangata. Ko mōhio tātou, ko mōhio tātou te ao katoa i ngā mahi a tau iwi kia tātou. Ko riru anō ngā ika nei, ngā kai moana, i a rātou, mā rātou e kōro me mā au tēnei, mā au tērā, e hea na tērā, kia au. Nā ngā tātou, nā te iwi mā au rike e nei taonga. Ka ore rātou i kone, ko ngā mā au rike i kone i te tuatahi. Nō reira, kia au nei, ngā taonga nei, whenua, kai moana, ngā moana, ngā maunga, nā te Māori. Mō te rākau, mō nā mea katoa o te whenua nei, kā rei tapaina, he mea whakanoho, he Māori. Nō reira, ka tipua ke tēnā rākau, ka tirohia, a me whakanoho te Māori o tēnei rākau, ko taua. A nei o nga kaupapa, a nei o nga hua, a nei tāna, tāna mahi, i runa i te whenua nei. Nā, ka tipua ke te tahi rākau, nā ka tirohi anō, nā whakatohia te Māori o tēnei. Ko rimu. E nari tātou te tangata. I tapa inoa i tātou, kia mauai nā inoa tawhito. Kua tapa ni, kua tuku. E nari ko te whakatō Māori, a he mea hou, he Māori. Kia tātou te iwi Māori me haere tonu me, whawhai tonu mo a tātou whenu. Kia hoki hoki mai. Kei te haere mai ngā uri whakatipu. Kei muri nei e tahi. Kia whai whenu ai rātou, hei mahi whare mō rātou. O tīmata tēnei wāhi, te mahi whare mō ngā uri o konei. O reira... Taku awhi i te tiriti. Kia hoki mai. Kia whai wāhi ai a tātou uri ki rungu i tō rātou whenu. E nei tāke. Nā me ki e haere ana koe kia e ki te tiki mano. Nei nā tāia tu koe ki reira, nā koe koe reru anō koe. E i mano. I whakatohia te Māori kia koe mo te whakamahu i nga whati. Nga, ko tērā ou, e mai wiwi maira, nga runa, i te tinihana, i te kōioio, nga, ka whati ia te waewae. Nga, ko tāku kia koe, kia roha rā koe ki tērā. Te nga koa, unua mai te tahi wāhi ou. Ana, ko reira, hei reira, ko mahi mai koe, ne? Ko waru mai koe te kiri, I nga pakia karani, i nga mutu tō waru mai nga i te kiri, nga hea ha tāu ka whakahoki ki a mano. Ko tāu ka whakahoki, ko papatū ānu ko tōnu, ko te kuia ne. Ko tiki koe te uku, nga kwa paniatu ki te wāhi hore mai rai a koe. Hea hai, kia urua no ai, kia ua hoki tērā te mahu. Kwa tiki koe i te koe ni a papatū anu 
hai faka mahu a tuitera ko chikia tsuko e itero na tamaliki atan hai faka mahu itene e ai ki na faka maori ate a maori mote maori ne ko tene me ko te maori ko te huna i chipuake itera fenua i fana mai chipuake itera fenua he maori tera no tera fenua a peni na na raka ko re ni tata o to an ia tan he raka maori ka to ene he ta te me i chipua ke rata i te nei fenua no le le rata ka no he raka maori no te nei fenua na wa ye re re nei ne he wa maori e nei no te nei fenua The problem that the Crown had was that their beachheads were very small uh, in Auckland here where the seat of government was established and the uh, New Zealand company settlements uh, at uh, Wahanui, New Plymouth, Wellington and Nelson uh, and later on the Otago settlers. So those beachheads were tiny and the problem that the government had was to extend its, uh, its dominion, its hegemony uh, over the rest of the country and the technique adopted was first of all massive purchase of land by Governor Gray in the South Island, who virtually bought up the whole of the South Island for about 14,500 pounds over a period of 10 years between 1848 uh, and 1860, uh, 10 to 12 years. The whole of the South Island was bought up, which allowed an influx of settlers to outnumber Māori. But in the North Island, uh, the tribes were much more numerous. They were not easily intimidated because Governor Gray threatened in the South Island, if you don't sell us this land, we'll just bring the soldiers down here. Uh, but in the North Island, the tribes organised and they resisted land sales, uh, and the answer was found in war, or they thought that they would find the answer in war. So in 1860, the wars broke out, extended into the North here in 1863 into the Waikato, and uh, three million acres of land were confiscated under the 1863 New Zealand Settlements Act. So the war was seen as a way of asserting uh, the Crown's um, sovereignty into the Waikato and opening up the Waikato for settlement and taking land by confiscation for military settlers. But they found that was a costly way of getting the land uh, because uh, I think they borrowed three million pounds on the English market to pay for that war. Um, and so uh, a much cheaper way was found when they devised the Native Land Court in 1867. Uh, which is a legal device, really, for the expropriation of Māori land. Uh, it's an artifice for legalised theft. That's what the Native Land Court was. And uh, it was quite scandalous. And I think uh, Rees, who was a land commissioner, uh, or sat on the Māori Land Commission, said, you know, uh, the dealings of the Native Land Court will make the cheeks of our future generations of our children blush with shame. A lot of you go to the courts these days for succession orders. And Tikona Māori has in some sense taken over the view of succession that the land court has put in place. But it must be remembered, and it comes out clearly in this book, that those rules of succession were rules deliberately laid down by judges, Pākehā judges, to make sure that your tribal society was undermined. That's why they passed those succession laws in the first place. They said, let's not acknowledge Ahikaroa. Let's not acknowledge mana. Let's not acknowledge the rights of hapu. Let's not acknowledge the rights of whānau and of the collected relationships. What we want to do is recognise individuals, and only individuals can succeed to interests. And once you've done that, then we can get your land. That was what the court was about. 
That's the way they set it up? Well, total disillusionment because uh, they were economically successful at the outset, trading up and down the coasts, having their own ships, their own flour mills, bringing their, you know, producing, uh, growing the stuff themselves, uh, milling their own flour and transporting to the market. So they had their own economic infrastructure that was well on the way to, to development. For a short time, there was a, a great boom of, of Māori economic well-being, but as soon as Pākehā numbers and Pākehā power became more entrenched, then gradually the land got taken, sometimes by warfare and confiscation, but more frequently by the more subtle processes of the law. That happened with the land, it happened with the fisheries, it happened also with areas like culture and spirituality. The result of that was that Māori became dispossessed the result was poverty, inequality, depression, alienation, and a major dependency on the welfare state. But the wars interrupted those development, and thereafter there was total disillusionment and uh, a lack, lack of morale, loss of morale, uh, as a consequence of the, of, of the confiscations and uh, having to surrender. They were never completely defeated, but they could see that to continue to fight was futile. So when General Cameron said, you're ready to make peace now, uh, after Te Ranga and Gate Pa in the Tauranga campaign, uh, they said, yes, we'll make peace. But uh, Cameron too was wanting to make peace because uh, he got really mauled at Gate Pa. It was a, a really severe defeat for a British uh, a standing army, which at that date uh, numbered upwards of 18,000 men. It was the biggest imperial army in the field in any part of the world at that stage of, of our history. And Cameron realised after that defeat at Gate Par that to take New Zealand by war of attrition was going to be a costly affair. <laughs> In 1867, the, the Native Land Court was set up and its job was to identify who owned what piece of land. Now, Māori land was held communally by the hapu, by the tribe, uh, by the iwi and by the waka confederation. You know, there were rough boundaries clearly known to each waka uh, and each territorial subgroup. One thing that the, the storekeepers did, according to, um, to Sorensen's analysis of what happened in Cambridge, um, these purchase rings were set up. The storekeeper would advance credit to a local Maori whom they knew had a lot of land. And once they got them into debt, they'd say, hey, you owe me this money, and if you don't pay me, I'm taking you to court. So um, faced with the judgment summons, uh, the chief who didn't want to sell his land had no other recourse than to sell land in order to get money to pay for his debts. Uh, so that, that, those were some of the nefarious activities that went on. So there was suborning of people to apply for title, there were gratuities, uh, liquor was part of the purchase payment, and uh, when the people got the title to the land uh, and they sold it, they got only a fraction of the money that they were promised because most of it went in lawyers' fees and survey costs and court costs and paying back the people who had advanced them credit to go and apply for the title. So it was a destructive period of Māori history between 1867 and uh, 1890, when most of the land went. I think seven millions was purchased pre-1860 uh, in the North Island. Uh, the whole of the South Island had been purchased by that time. And Ngaitahu were totally marginalised. They only had 10 acres ahead left, and that was goat country. They couldn't even live on that. The, the Ngaitahu were beggared by Gray's policy uh, between 1858 and 1862. It should be a matter of honour. Unfortunately, it has until now been a matter of expediency, political expediency, because the breach of the treaty has been where Pākehā power has come from, economic expediency, because the country was built on dispossessing Māori. There were men of honour. 
but the powerful people, the vested interests, people like Russell and Whitaker, who established the uh, New Zealand Insurance Company, uh, the Bank of New Zealand, the speculators who wanted to open up the Waikato for their speculative ventures, uh, they had much more power and so they won the day. And in our own time, men of honour are having to clean up the mess and they're finding it very difficult. The Rangi Toto Channel. So in between te, uh, Rangitoto and their peninsula is Te Awanui or Peretu. So the waka came from the Pacific and, and came down that river. Some stopped here in Tamaki um, to, to link up with earlier arrivals from, from Toi and Kuper and, and others. However, most of the waka we, we know today, our, our, our corporate waka, did not stay for long. Uh, Tāmaki was full <laughs> already. Uh, so we know Te Arawa came, um, some jumped off, Kahu, Kahu Matamomoe, um, he stayed here. Some Ngāti Awa, uh, Mātātua also touched on here. Tainui Waka as well. Uh, we have lots of names left by different tūpuna uh, around Tāmaki. Iriroki ngā iatawi. I a tauiwi ngā, ngā whenua nei nā rātua no i tango. Tō mātou marā i raro, i a mātou nohua nei i raro. I tango hi a e rā e te e tauiwi, public, through the Public Works Act, ne? i hari e rā. Me nei whenua, pē rā tia katoa. So our well, tūpuna came through here, um, and, and some of the kōrero, some of the stories and names are left. We have... Um, Rangi Toto, Te Rangi Totongia Tameta Kapua is its proper name, or one of its names, and that commemorates the, the whawhai that uh, Hotu Roa and Tameta Kapua had on that, on that island. Um, there was some conflict on, on first arrival. Uh, I think, like a good Aroa man, typical Aroa man, he, he, he hit on uh, Hotu Roa's wife. There's a bit of conflict there. Uh, so Maunga Kia Kia, largest uh, man-made earth fort in the southern hemisphere. It's huge. One of the terraces on this western, uh, this western side that we're looking at is about a kilometre long. And that's like our modern day uh, major motorway project, you know, that, that, that you'll see people doing now in that time. You know, huge, huge job to construct these pa. One of the names for that pa and others is Ngafakairo Atitahi or Te Moko Atitahi. So Maunga Kiaki is, um, uh, for a lot of reasons, is, is a very important um, Maunga. In its heyday, 5,000 people living on, on the slopes of of Maunga Kia Kia and seven distinct papakainga. There's a lot of nutrients in the soil from, the, from these volcanoes, which produces bumper crops. Coupled with that, you know, um, you know once we're warriors, well, we know once we're gardeners, they, were, um, they had gardens of industrial you know, type scale here. One of those gardens was called Ngam, uh, Ngamara Tahuri. Tahuri's gardens, which went from Maunga Kia Kia to Waiaturua, which is about four kilometers huge. Um, another name for those gardens was Kohi Awhito Ngā Mara Atahuri. So the clouds of butterflies, if we were standing here today, you'd see across those gardens. Two seas. Uh, we have Taikehu on the Tainui Waka when it landed. 
jumping off over on this side and doing his uh, reconnaissance on the Manuka Harbour, coming back and talking about him catching mullet with his hands. There was so, so much kai. Plenty of fish, two um, high tides, I guess finish fishing over here, <laughs> shoot over there, um, which is what the kuwaka do. We get about uh, 20,000 of them, I think, out um, near Te Atatu, um, and they fly between tides. And when they do, or when they did, or when they do, but when we did, we, <laughs> we <laughs> jump up in the air and whack them out of the sky and, and, uh, and, and catch them. We had two base camps, one at Onehunga and Maunga Kia Kia, and one which we called the Orake Kainga Complex, which is Remuera, uh, that little bay there, Hobson Bay, Kainga all through there. Two base camps, uh, in summer the head of each, each clan, Fano would have to move out from the base camp to satellite fishing villages dotted around the coasts. So we have fishing villages at um, Waipapa, bottom of Parnell Ro Road, Horotiu, Queen Street, uh, Te Tōr, at another Te Tōr, Beaumont Street, uh, Ōkā, Point Erin, uh, Ōpoutu Keha, Cox's Bay, Te Rehu, the zoo, uh, and so on. So each fish for shark, heaps of sharks still up under the harbour bridge, uh, the Waitamata River behind us there. Um, and you still hear fishermen talk about all of the shark that they'd go up there. Chess all of the kai in summer and uh, autumn, and then when it's winter, come back to the base camps and share the kai. 1914, we had a sewer pipe under the operating. So, obviously, pre resource management act sections eight about consulting us and so on. So they cut off, cut off access. There was, there was no access to the, to the beach. Eight foot high pipe poured out the raw sewage out, out by Kelly Tarleton's there. Um, so Kelly Tarleton's aquarium is the old, old uh, sewers. Um, so that had, had obviously had an impact on everybody here, um, physically and wairua wise as well. Um, I think the Urake report, you know, pretty much says, you know, the pipe said what Auckland thought about Ngāti Whātu of Ōrāke. You know, they, they, they put all their uh, tiko here, uh, aimed it at us. I remember at that time when I was age nine and I asked my parents uh, when we were living on the Papakainga at Ōkahu Bay and our house was burning and government workers were going around torching all the houses in the village. And I remember distinctly asking my parents, my father and my, my father, I says, why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing this to us? <laughs> we had 52 homes in, in, in the village. The homes were destroyed and burnt because Her Majesty the bloody queen was coming to Auckland. So they had to move the Māoris. They did that by burning us out and compulsory acquiring the remnant of our land, the last 12 acres. The people were dispirited. The people were crushed. My, my elders, uh, every week one of my elders died. In fact, six weeks after the burning of our whare, my grandmother died and she died and many of our other queer fire komatuas died. One week after the next we were having tangis and all our old people died and they died not because of any illness or because of any uh, disability or any plague that ran through the marae, they died because they were broken. Their spirit was systematically broken after a hundred and 130 years of, of trying to salvage their sacred heritage. Aole te mori ka rika noa te ohonga ki te ao mapukau noa. Now in the Waitangi Tribunal Report, the burning of our homes 
was defined as a breach of the treaty. The removal of the people from their sacred, historical, ancestral land was a breach of the treaty. The move by the government to compulsory acquire our land was a breach of the treaty. A dozen other, 24 other things that were done to our people was a definite breach of the treaty. We are saying we've had enough. Recognise the Treaty of Waitangi, recognise the injustice that you have served upon the Māori people. And while we were on Bastion Point, this Bastion Point is Māori land. You have taken enough of our land under the Treaty of Waitangi. What you have is a breach of the Treaty of Waitangi. And we are saying enough is enough. And we were saying, give our land back. We need to me for fight on that. government decided to take away the last bastion of our land at Takaparofa, that we decided to physically form ourselves in front of bulldozers to stop once again the annexing of our ancestral land. Bulldozers were coming in. We had meetings with Winstone, and because all the Māoris were driving the bulldozers, we, we told the, the take, we told that this is Māori land. They said that they will come, uh, bring their machines, but they will, won't drive on to ancestral Māori land. While it was Ngāti Whātua, Tāmaki Makoto, take, it became a Ngāti Māori take because so many Māori from uh, Ngāti Paro, from Te Aupori, from, from all the tribes were represented there in some fashion. We have stood up against the might of the Crown and we're not big men, but let them come and try and evict us off here We'll have so many people on Bastion Point. We want that kite to fly. We want that flag to fly. We want this house to stand because this is the basis of our pleas. Give our land back. And the visits from Komatuas, from Fire, from Queer was so amazing. The, the mass support from Maoridom. Uh, because uh, we were termed as radicals and troublemakers and, and, uh, and so on. But what it was a signpost for Māori all over Aotearoa.
Well, when Best in Point first started, remember, remember, important thing is that the the Māori Land March, the setting up of uh, Ngā Tamatoa, the setting up of Māori, Māori District Councils was in some way a beginnings of, um, of what culminated at uh, Bastion Point. Uh, of course, Bastion Point, we had nothing, so we had to do something to, uh, to arrest our position. The hard core of protesters is gathering at the front of the meeting house. They're chanting, singing Māori hymns. They're obviously not going to go voluntarily. No action through the courts, no action through government, uh, no, um, no success through um, royal commissions or petitions. Um, there was a time to recognise that we were sons of chiefs and warriors, that either we throw ourselves into the sea or we stand up and fight. We stand up and physically fight and put ourselves in a position of confrontation. <laughs> While breaking the law, we're not lawbreakers. We are breaking unjust laws. We became lawmakers, and it was legal to confiscate Maori land. While it was law and legal, was it right? It wasn't right. So we were, became law changers. that while Bastion Point is now back in the control of the Ngāti Whātua Trust Board, I'm saddened by the fact that my parents and my fires and my queers and my chiefs are not here to stand and, and be, be gladdened that we have restored the ancestral rights of our people. And that's, that's a sadness I'll carry for a very long time. What it will do, it will motivate me to remind my mokopunas, uh, remind our people uh, for the careful use of our land, for the rights of our people, must always be upheld, must never be given. Our land must never ever be trampled on ever again. And our rights must be respected and we must fight for those. We cannot lie back and be carefree and easy. We must always be watchful and alert. Consequently, our deliberations with the present government is for the reformation of our tribe, which has been destroyed. Um, any of the um, reparations that the government decrees for our people, they come very short of what the tribe deserves for repairing the tribe for enhancing their cultural well-being and to establish them in their, on their land and to build homes for our people. When your lands were restored here, back to your people, what impact did that have on your iwi, on Ngāti Whātua? Well, there was, there was moments of, uh, of sombre and um, careful thought um, because of the 160 years of struggle and finally there was victory, and finally there was understanding and respect, and finally there was uh, that acknowledgement 
by the government, the very people that that were responsible for our our demise. We were responsible for our landless state. Um, there was a lot of quiet reflection, mainly on, upon um, so many of our valiant workers and queers and comatos. We paid respect. Um, we gathered together uh, in a very sombre meeting, a very sombre gathering, and we just just remembered. Um, for instance, my grandmother took her two weeks to get to Wellington. You know, and now we hop on a hop on a plane with her in an hour, and we reflected up, upon all the hardships and the unjust way in which uh, our forebears were uh, suffered. And so we suffered with them in our moment of uh, of triumph. Uh, we had to um, we had to think and dwell upon it because there was so much sadness intermingled with with the relation with the realization that all our mahi uh, and all the mahi of our forebears had come to fruit, but we couldn't take all the credit. And uh, I demanded that uh, our people show uh, homage and pay, say, prayers and incantations to the valiant work that was done by so many. And we are only the receivers of what we demanded under the Treaty of Waitangi. representation for Mana Pinua at the top table. The conquest wasn't one day. The conquest was over a period of time and we established over a period of time the Aikar of the of the region, which then uh, gives right to Mana Pinua state because of our Ahika being here from the 1700s to now. It's not about the first man on the mountain, it's about the last. Because we are part of the city, they forget we don't go away. They change, they go, but Tonga Te Whenua stays. Well, today's demonstration is about uh, getting a life for a Māori political voice. It's about gaining equality with, uh, with the Pākehā political voice so that at the table of the, city, the Super City Council of Auckland you have the best leaders from all cultures. That's the right thing to do in a multicultural age. The town and the Kitiwi, Norato, and Noto Hindu. Hatu, what the Fakapiri at Tatu Iraru to Kotahitanga, Kahikoi Tahi Naitato, Maraki de Hadam, Hirotanga Koko. The Royal Commission recommended this, and the government has not acknowledged that and has um, said there will be no Māori seats on the Super City Council. Well, for Te Arawa, we've come in solidarity with our Fanongatanga uh, relationships for our people of Ngāti Pātua and Tainui. Te Arawa, when our canoe arrived here, and there are many landmarks here, stayed for some months here in the isthmus of Tāmaki Makaurau. So you'll have Ōkahu, Kahu Matamomoe Bay, you have uh, Mairangi, Oho Mairangi Bay, and you have um, Tamate Kapua leaving his uh, marks on several places. So for us in Te Arawa, we come to support that. But we also come here because this will be the precedent. If a super city is established without Māori representation, then again they will have trampled on our uh, status as Tangata Whenua and made us invisible. So we are here to ensure that we aren't invisible in the 21st century. <laughs> Ko te haere mai ki te tautoko i te reo 
Oh, I think Ngāti Whātua have shown tremendous grace and leadership. Ngāti Whātua deserve a voice. Uh, no other group has given as much to the city of, of Auckland as Ngāti Whātua. Thank you for marching with us this day.
Tukona Temanga. Hi,